What is up, everybody? It is Alex from Heavy New York, and on the phone, we return with Chad of Necrot. Thank you so much for your time today. Thank you for having me. Yep. It, I, and again, though, I got to say, it feels weird that we're doing an interview, and it's not uh, you know waiting for you outside your van during loading. <laughs> well, I mean, if if we were on the road right now, it definitely happened. But you know, we're. We're all stuck at home together. Yeah, since 2017, since the tour you did with Black Dahlia Murder, every single tour that you've been on, even if I was, whether I was interviewing you guys or not, it always consisted of watching you guys load in. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, we, you know, we got to get there super early to make it happen. Those load-in times are so brutal. Yeah. I know, it's so weird. So maybe, like, when this interview's over, if you could, like, send me, like, a video of you, like, taking your drum set apart or something like that, just to make it feel <laughs> somewhat normal. Right. Yep. Just, just to get in that mindset and that mood. <laughs> exactly. Oh, man, I never thought I would miss, like, standing outside a venue in the sweltering heat or blistering cold that much. <laughs> but... It's so awesome to have you here. So the newest album is Mortal, which is scheduled to come out uh, this August. Is this like maybe just a direct continuation of what people were hearing off of Blood Offerings, or is this going to be like a new start in a way for Necrot? Well, I mean, you know, people are expecting a lot of the same themes, a lot of same uh, style as Blood Offerings, but I, th I definitely think that we, we've stepped it up um, as far as like, you know, our playing and, and all around musicianship. Um, you know, we've been been touring nonstop for the past three years playing hundreds of shows so we've definitely gotten that confidence um as a band and you know when we went in to record we just we we wanted to kill it we knew we were going to kill it so i mean you know from all the practicing we did and just you know all the confidence that we've had building up to this it was you know it was a perfect uh i guess a perfect combination for you know for us to make a, a perfect album Mm -hmm. Being that you released already three singles, Your Hell, Stench of Decay, and Asleep Forever, could that maybe serve as a clear representation of what the whole uh, Mortal album will sound like, or is this still, in a way, just uh, scratching the surface? Oh, I mean, it's it's definitely a good um, good part of the album. Um, the album is eight tracks total, and that's three. So, I mean, most of the, most of the tracks going forward definitely keep up on that theme, but they're they're all pretty unique in their own way as well like we we wanted to make a, a an album that flowed really well and i think we accomplished that um so you know anybody listening you know go check out the album and you'll you'll see what i'm talking about it it's definitely it's definitely similar throughout but it all the songs are, are they stand on their own definitely that's what I feel about this album. And, like, if you don't mind me asking, because a lot of people connected with Blood Offerings, I know a lot of people who have considered that, like, the death metal album of 2017. Was there maybe, like, a little added pressure with the making of this album, in a way? Oh, of course. I mean, people are expecting, you know, an album that tops Blood Offerings, and, you know, everyone's saying, like, oh, that album is amazing. But we we knew that we, we were going to have to step it up, and, and I think... I think this one crushes Blood Offerings. Even though I, I still like Blood Offerings, I just think this this album has definitely stepped it up a notch. Yeah. Was there maybe kind of like a preconceived idea when entering the studio of how you wanted it to sound like, or did things kind of just happen like very organically and fall into place? I mean, we, we had these songs at least worked out by the end of August, so we knew what we were going to be playing when we went into the studio only a few months later um but we you know we just wanted to make sure that everybody was at the top of their game i mean i practiced i practiced for like dang like a month and a half straight before we went into the studio just to make sure that you know when i when i got up to play i i just got done as quickly as possible and i and i nailed the best performances that i could so Mm -hmm. Is what we're hearing on this album maybe like the a first initial take of how the songs were originally written, or did they change a lot over a span of time? They didn't change too much. Um, that, that's pretty much like you know the songs that we had when we first started. But you know, like we we definitely added stuff, or we you know maybe we cut stuff um, compared to you know the rough demos that we did. But um, yeah, I mean these are these are pretty much how the songs were written when they were written. 
and they're really connecting with people. I also want to congratulate you on the Decibel Magazine feature. Huge shout out to the folks at Decibel. I mean, thank you you so much. Yeah, kind of a cliche question, but you know, being that Decibel has been a heavy metal leading outlet for so long, and you know, I've really exposed so much people to great music. I mean, just how did it feel to make it on the cover of something like that? That's like the ultimate metal Rolling Stone right yeah no it was awesome i mean albert and everyone at decibel has been a huge um support for necrot over the years and and i mean they've always you know supported us with every every release that we did and then you know they they offered us a spot on the decibel tour they've they've always been they've always had our backs and it was really awesome for us um to get the offer to be on the cover and i mean we're super thankful for it i mean everyone everyone in necrot and tank crimes is is super super thankful about it and we're just really happy to be on it yeah that decibel tour last year with cannibal corpse and morbid angel you guys in blood incantation i mean that was the most insane tour of the year yeah it was sick man i'm i'm so glad we got to do that and uh i mean like i said you know getting the tour with those bands it's like that's like a dream come true. Yeah, and a fun little fact, I don't know if you were aware of this, but I, I think it was like around that time, too, PlayStation Theater announced that they were closing, so people mm-hmm. wanted to just destroy the venue on the highest note. <laughs> yeah, I hear. I remember hearing about that, and it was cool that we got to play that place uh, at least once you know, before it closed, but damn, that load-in and load-out was pretty gnarly. Well, granted, it was, you know, 20 degrees out and i i i gotta mention to the listeners now that necrot if you remember that interview that i i remember was totally photobombed by all your members when it was just me and you but uh oh yeah you guys saved me from the potential pneumonia that i was waiting out there in playstation theater if it wasn't for you escorting me in it would have been i probably would have froze to death yeah i mean they're super strict with the security there it's you know it's kind of crazy yeah, so I just wanted to thank you guys for saving me from hypothermia. Yeah, of course. <laughs> <laughs> you, you know, like those memes they make where they say your music saved me? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you guys saved me from hypothermia. <laughs> we're, we're saviors, man. <laughs> now, um, being a drummer, you know, I, I, was, I forgot to ask you this, but as a drummer, do you need, like, music before you lay down the rhythm and the beat, or do you sometimes have a whole drum pattern laid down and maybe the rest of the band could write over that? No, I usually, I usually want the music first. It just helps me get ideas, and and also when you know the other band members have ideas of certain drum parts that I could play over it, that that definitely helps too. Because you know it's something that maybe I wouldn't have thought of, and it sounds just as cool as as something else. So I'm you know I'm always open um, to hearing new ideas. But definitely getting back to the question, yeah, it's. It's mostly music first, then drums. Mm-hmm. But be honest, when you get the riff patterns and everything and the arrangement of the song handed to you, how off time is it? Like, I almost imagine that being like a drummer is almost kind of like the duct tape in a way to make all the parts really fit, right? Oh, I mean, uh, usually like we, me and Luca will practice it together. When he, when he first presents it, we'll always practice it together. So it's always a little weird you know, trying to understand the parts that he's coming up with just because of the time signatures or just the way that it's played. But, you know, eventually I'll get it. And, um, yeah, it definitely it definitely starts off time. But once you start hearing it and start repeating it in your head, like, yeah, it just it, it comes pretty naturally after that. And I'd imagine, like, um, you, being that you've been drumming for so long now, it's just almost like a second instinct in a way. You don't even need to think about it, right? Yeah, no, I mean, it's still, there's still times when I'm playing certain beats that I don't really play normally, so I have to, like, adapt and, and work harder to achieve that. But, um, yeah, I mean, for certain things, it's just, this is what I'm going to do, and this is how I do it. <laughs> That's the best way to do it. And I, whether you're playing death metal or you're playing, like, Barry White, I think in the end, like, drums are always <laughs> tied to the same thing, and that's keeping the rhythm and keeping the beats. Yeah, so, yeah they're the foundation. Yep, the famous saying, your drummer sucks, your band sucks. <laughs> no pressure. Sure. No pressure. No pressure, no pressure. <laughs> yeah. Now, you, I know that you are a very prolific artist as well, playing with, you know, Vastum and Atrament and uh, 
uh, Mortius and stuff. Does maybe like the mind frame at all change depending on the projects that you are working with, or is there a usual maybe method behind the madness that applies to everything? No, I mean, I, I just go in and give it my best every time with every band. All right, that's, that's I think the that's only, the only way you can do it. That's the only. It does maybe playing with another project allow you to bring in some newer stuff to another project, or do you try? Yeah, to- of course, of course. I mean, every band that you play with, you're you're experiencing uh, new writing techniques and and new ideas for yourself. So, of course, with with all that combined, you can use it for every project, and you always, you know, you always want to bring your best performance to everything because you know with albums they last forever you know when you look at the in in going back to like the theme of mortal and the theme of necrot is like these themes or these ideas or these representations maybe of who you and luca and everybody are like are like do you look at these albums like a self-portrait in a way well i mean we definitely like with the themes of the album i mean we talk about the human condition and how you know, humans are living in this fucked up world and what everybody has to go through every day. So, I mean, of course, it's definitely like a self-portrait of, you know, us as members, but it's like a self-portrait of society as a whole. Are you re- are you thoroughly regretting finishing this album before the whole world went to shit recently? <laughs> no way. I'm glad we got it done because if we would have... If we would have just waited a little longer, we might not have been able to record immediately. I mean, we we had a plan to get this out before, you know, the summer, because the summer we were just going to tour nonstop on it. And, um, you know, now we've had to push the album back, but, it, you know, we didn't have to push it back too much, but, um, you know, it, we just wanted to get it out as soon as possible after the pandemic hit because, you know, we didn't want to lose any momentum. Yeah, but I'd imagine that you and Sony and Luca are just totally inspired right now. Maybe we could be getting a, a follow-up to this album much sooner. Yeah, I mean, if if we're not able to tour, we're definitely going to start writing. So hopefully, hopefully something happens either way. <laughs> <laughs> is maybe like, I, I know you're not the vocalist, but like, is there maybe like a goal behind like Necrot to kind of like um, maybe inform the listener on certain issues or is the music fairly open to interpretation? I mean, if you look at the lyrics, it's pretty like, it's, you can interpret it for yourself. I mean, we, we talk about, like I said, like, you know, the fucked up world and, and what humans are, what everybody, what normal people have to go through every day. And, um, I don't know. I just, I feel like if, if people are able to, you know, really understand the lyrics, they'll understand what themes we're going for. Yeah. Is there like research that goes involved with these themes or do, is there maybe any vestige of like your personal experiences that could be portrayed on here? I feel like a lot of it is personal experience. And, you know, if, if Luca has to research something, he might, but I feel like he's pretty honest with the, with the listeners, uh, you know, of, of where the lyrics are coming from. I feel like, you know, he, he does a lot of, you know, self-reflection mm-hmm. for the lyrics. That's why I think people really do identify with your music. Because, you know, like, there's some death metal bands, obviously I don't mention any names, but they kind of revolve around, you know, one certain theme. Like, Deicide always sings about Satanism. You know, Cannibal Corpse are like a horror movie soundtrack. But I feel like you guys uh, make something that really vocally relates to people on a personal level. It's not just about, you know, listening to death metal to let out their aggression. I think it's more or less death metal that identifies with their aggression. Yeah, and the thing is, it's like a lot of bands talk about you know fantasy stuff like you know zombies and and murder and and horror and gore and stuff and like you know that's all cool like you know we're fine with that but you know what what we're just talking about what we know and like what our experience is i mean there's no there's no reason to fake it like we want to be as honest and and as true as possible with you know with everybody so it's cool that people can you know relate to us with that i mean it's just the the world that we live in. I mean, why why talk about something else when you can talk about what really matters or like what is most important to you? Yeah. Well, I think that's what the beautiful thing about art is is that it could, it could come from any direction. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 
do you, do you consider this is like a new joke or like term that I've been using with bands? Would you consider Mortal to be kind of shuffle friendly, as I like to call it, or do you recommend that somebody starts off with Your Hell and ends with the title track? Um, I mean, it, it's it was you know the the songs are, are arranged for a reason on the album, but I feel like all the songs are like they stand on their own. So if you wanted to shuffle it. It, you know, you wouldn't be disappointed. <laughs> I think, like, you know, the, the title track, which is the longest track on the album, you know, that's that's definitely a long track for anybody to get through, but, you know, most of most of the other songs on the album are definitely shuffle-friendly. Yeah, I know that with a Blood Incantations last uh, album, like, you have to start with the first song and end with the last song on that, so... <laughs> yeah, but they that's that's how they want it. They want you to pay attention. You have to focus, concentrate. Definitely, absolutely. And uh, I got a couple more questions for you. But like, really, when as somebody who has seen Necrot live so many times, as I clearly mentioned at the beginning of this interview, um, you know, it's always a different experience watching you play versus simply listening to you play. But is there maybe because you're behind the kit, both in the studio and on stage, is there maybe any similarity to playing live as when you're in the studio, or is it a different mind frame altogether? It's definitely different. I mean, I feel like there's more pressure in the studio because you have to like, you know, time is money, and uh, you know you gotta you gotta play your best takes as soon, as quickly as you can, just so you can keep it moving. But you know, with live, um, you know, you're just you're there and you're creating an experience for people. Like they're they're at the show to see you, and they want to feed off your energy, and you're feeding off of their energy. You know, by by playing is there anything it, it, i know this sounds kind of weird to ask but being that being when you're playing live you're taking the material that you release on the album and you're bringing it to a live setting and you're executing it that way but is there anything remotely creative about playing live i mean you, it's definitely creative because it's like you're you're like interacting with the audience uh you know luca is constantly talking to the audience and and they're like talking back too at some point. So I definitely think you can get creative with it. I mean, we, we, you know, we don't have, you know, a budget to like have pyrotechnics or like crazy, like scrims or stuff like that. But, you know, we, yeah. we do a, what we can, you know, we have a, a sick ass banner and, uh, you know, we, we have a sick ass energy that we bring to every show. Like we don't disappoint. Yeah, and I gotta say, it's also a lot easier being that you guys are a three-piece because there's room to bring anything you want on stage. Yeah, of course. I mean, we we kill it with the three-piece, and that's that's all that matters. Is you know, we we try our best and we we nail it every single time. Yeah, I mean, a three-piece death metal band, and being that you know, especially nowadays, like a lot of death metal bands have like three guitar players all using eight-string guitars and. <laughs> You know, a drum set that makes Mike Portnoy's look like the Hello Kitty kit. Like, uh, yeah. it's. It, I think it's a breath of fresh air. I mean, we talked about the load-in and everything like that, but I still think you guys have the easiest load-in scenario out of any band you've toured with. Yeah, it's, it's easy to load in the gear. It's just the merch that always takes a fucking shit ton of time. God damn. Well, you have beautiful <laughs> merch, so however you're presenting it, excellent work. Well, thank you. Yeah, we we definitely work hard to make that shit look cool too. <laughs> yeah, I remember like people looking at your merch table. At, uh, I think it was at the Vitus show, and they were looking at it like it was an art gallery. Yep. <laughs> I mean, we we don't, you know, we don't. Uh, what's the word? Uh, back down or just we don't like. Uh, God, I don't know why I can't think of the word. We just we we make good merch. We don't make crap merch. Like I'm. When I'm designing merch ideas or coming up with ideas, I think about it as like, would I wear this shirt? Would I put this piece of art on a shirt and wear it forever? Did you, you know, design I don't these? Want, well, I don't, I mean, we have artists that come up with the designs, but like, I, I definitely have a hand in coming up with the designs that we use. We all agree on it, but like, you know, for years I was always sitting with our graphic designer, Marky coming up with the designs for our, you know for our stuff and you know there's a certain you know aesthetic that i want to present with the band and i feel like you know like i said it's like you you have to you, ha you can't just expect people to buy your stuff because they like the band they 
yeah, it has to be a cool art. It has to be a cool design. Like, there's a lot of factors that go into it. Yeah. Have you thought about making face masks? Oh, we we definitely have, and um, I think they're gonna be for sale soon. Well, you already got one sold. Sweet. <laughs> yep. Yep. I mean, the, uh, I, nothing is better than wearing like a heavy metal mask. Like, I just got a dying fetus mask, and wearing that on the subway was just great. Just great. Badass. Yep. And and I, I like what you said too, because presentation is part of the art. It's not just the album, and it's not just the live show. You try to make every aesthetic of Necrot count. Yeah. Of course. I mean, it's like, you can't just, you know, people will like your band, but, you know, you have to have cool merch to go along with it, and it lasts forever. Like, people will be like, damn, that was a sick design. Like, where can I get that? Yeah. People, you know, people people take notice of that. Yep. And I think it also, you know, especially now, people are, like, wearing their merch to remind themselves of better times, you know? So. Yep. So it, it's always like, it, it really is like a photo album. Like, it's not just representing the band you like. It's representing who the band is, who you are. That's why you should buy merch. Of course. No, I completely agree. Yeah, that wasn't intentional, but I think you and I just made the best merch plug of all time. <laughs> there we go. Yeah. All right, we got to trademark it. There we go. There we go. Let's get on that. Uh, <laughs> So before we go, I want to thank you so much for your time. Always great to talk to you. I'm looking forward to, you know, imagining you guys loading out right now. But uh <laughs> well, thank you. Thank you again for having us. It's always awesome getting to talk. Yeah, absolutely. Just um obviously Mortal is scheduled to come out August 28th, right? Yeah, August 28th. All right. Is there just anything else that you would like to promote? Obviously, thanks to a certain virus that I'm not naming on my outlet because I don't want to give it any publicity. But uh, <laughs> I'd imagine that once all this is over, uh, you, you we'll be seeing you guys on the road quite a bit, right? Yeah. I mean, we're trying to book stuff, you know, while we can. But, you know, who knows if it'll even happen. We're just trying to stay positive and, and hope for the best. But, um, yeah, just, you know, thank you again for having me and doing the interview and just you know want to shout out my other bandmates uh and scotty at tank crimes and liz at ear split for uh helping everything go as smoothly as possible absolutely great people and it's always great to shout them out and uh maybe can we maybe be expecting a live stream performance would you ever be up to that no we're not gonna do one we just we want to wait till shows are able to happen again and give people the real real experience Okay, well, at least for me, live stream a load in. <laughs> yep, there we go. We'll, we'll just go to our, pra our practice space and, and load in the van and load out <laughs> a special one-off. That'll be the greatest trolling ever, actually. Imagine, right? if, a, imagine if a band does that. I mean, it's a good idea. I kind of want to do it now, but Luca and Sonny are out of town indefinitely, so <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what we can make it possible. All right, well, anything is possible. <laughs> yeah. All right, but thank you so much, Chad. Everybody, we are here with Chad of Necrop. Be sure to pick up Mortal coming out August 28th. Pick it up then. Once supplies last forever, we'll see you next time on Heavy New York.